welcome to Stampex. It's great to see you again in this wonderful venue in London. What I'd like to do today is to show you a collection that I bought about a year ago, which was assembled by a very elderly gentleman in one of the, one of the old British colonies. He purchased the material over 50, 60 years. The collection is a bit of a mess, but within that mess, that there is the good, bad, and the ugly, and the amazing. And I'd like to just sit you down, I'd like to talk through the collection. I'm Bill Barrell, major dealer in all things Great Britain, postal history stamps, based in the UK. I, I travel the world selling all, all British stuff. Big mail order business, and if anybody's got any queries or wants any help at all with, with respect to GB Philately, I'm your man. It was a client I knew in the early 1980s who had emigrated actually to Australia and he, he, he continued to buy from me. He, he continued to buy nice items from me. He is now a nonogenarian and he wishes to sell his collection. So he contacted me. It eventually arrived via uh, international courier and I, I valued it, I bought it. And what I like to do is to really show you what's in there. Now, I, I, I met his expectations for price. He wanted X amount, I paid him X plus. So he, he was very happy. I was delighted because a lot of this stuff has not seen the open market for probably 20, 30 years. So it's, it's fresh material, which is what collectors want. We've got a nice comfy table here and chairs. Let's go and have a look at what we've got in this amazing volume, shall we? I'm looking forward to it. Let's okay. do it. Okay, I, right. I think you'll enjoy it. The volume I'm going to show you is Queen Victoria line engraved, which is the penny blacks, penny reds, and the Topney blues. And we're going to see what we can find, what is really nice, what is maybe not what it appears and what is just absolute rubbish. We're also gonna really examine some of these stamps. We're gonna, we're gonna look at the back of the stamps. We're gonna see if there's any, any faults. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use three things that wherever I travel the world, and I do a lot of shows for all over the world, three things that I don't see collectors really using. One is their eyes to really examine the items. Secondly, is a good pair of tweezers. Thirdly, is a good magnifying glass. So I'm going to use these three key tools to show you what is in this album. Okay, so we're going to start with a nice range of penny blacks. Some showing uh, plate wear, um, red Maltese cross, black Maltese cross, large margins. Now, in terms of valuing them to, to buy, uh, what I will do is I, I will carefully pick up the stamp with my tweezers. I'll, I'll, I'll take a visual overall look at it and I'll say, okay, that stamp, that stamp is, gonna, is going to be in very fine condition, that one, and it's probably going to retail at 200 to 250 pounds. So I then value my buying price accordingly, having thoroughly examined it, okay? So when I examine it, I gently, I'll gently flip the corners, very gently, to, to see if there are any corner bends. There are not. I will hold it up to the a good light. This is a bit dull here, but it, this, it's a good stamp. It has no fins. It has, there's no pinholes. That is a very fine penny black. I like it. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna pay the collector a good price for it. Okay? This, this one here is, a, is, is, in, is in similar condition with a black Maltese cross and, and, and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for visual appeal. I'm looking for stamps that look nice. I'm looking for penny blacks that have good margins. Okay? As, as we progress through, I, I'd like to draw your attention to one, one or two that are a little bit better, just a little bit better than they look. There's one, one here which is in a, a curious greyish black shade. Now that is because it's from the rare plate 11. Plate 11 was the last plate to be used. It was only in use for, I believe, two days. I think there are only 400 sheets printed, and, and it's the penny black 
that everybody looks for. This collection has one. It's very nice condition. Nice black Maltese cross. It's got a constant variety which identifies it as the Rare Plate 11. And that is also supported by what we have here. We have a certificate from the Royal Philatelic Society issued in 1977, which states, Penny Black in Perth, Plate 11, used is genuine. And it's signed by the then chairman of the, the Royal Philatelic Society, Ron Lee, unfortunately now deceased, but he, he, he was the collector who put together quite exceptional GB collections and sold them through Stanley Gibbons in 1970 under the pseudonym of Maximus. Wonderful series. It was four auctions in 1970. A bit before my time, but amazing reference. Anyway, so that is the nice plate 11. Now, that, that, that earlier stamp I showed you retails at 225. This one, this one has a catalogue value of five and a quarter thousand and I would probably retail it for two and a half three thousand pounds so you know we've 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 got wow. we've got all, we've got all sorts of prices here yeah. and, and, and unless you examine them and plate them you will not be able to accurately assess them and value them let's have a look at how you can determine which plate it's from which is key key also to value because you know it is still possible on the open market to, to find examples from the rare plate 11 that have not been correctly identified. What I'd like to show you uh, is a book produced quite a while ago by, by Charles Nissen where he, he illustrates every lettering from every plate. Now I know we live in a digital age but I'm very much, I really am a traditionalist and I, I like to use books. I spend enough time as it is in a computer so, you know, I, I, I like to use traditional books for plating. Now, this, th this book here, which, as I say, illustrates every position for every lettering, will, will help you identify all your penny blacks. If, if you want further information, this, this is the other book you need, Guidelines to the Penny Black by Percy Litchfield, which will list all of the constant varieties. Okay, so that, 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 that's, that's the penny blacks quickly looked at or is it because in this volume here we have a strip of six penny blacks a block of four penny blacks a strip of three penny blacks and an odd one stuck at the bottom let's have a look at these now these these are much duller in appearance they are much smoother to the feel that is because they are later reprints they are later reprints that that could fool quite a lot of collectors Okay, th these, these are reprints taken circa 1910 period and uh, a, a strip of six penny blacks. Well, I sold one here at the show actually yesterday for about £3,000. This, this strip of six probably retail 675 So there's a big difference. Know your stamps. Okay, use your eyes, your tweezers and your magnifying glass and get experience. Okay. Likewise, this, this block of four, that is also a reprint. The strip of three is a reprint. But the, pen, the, the, the stamp we've got at the bottom here is a very, very, very fine, genuine example of what we call the, the VR. Now, th this is a slightly different example uh, of, of the Penny Black. This was used for government departments, which is why it has the letters VR in the upper squares. This is a very, very nice example. Retail, ten, uh, seven and a half to ten thousand pounds. Wow! So, I know, I know. Wow, really? So you yeah. have got you have got everything in this book. That's incredible. You, you, you've got nice singles, rare stuff, reprints, yeah. and major rarities. There's a page here that are unplated, so I I, I will thoroughly examine them. I what, what I will do. Uh, if, if there's any gunge on the back, there's a, there's a bit of hinge remainder on there. If there's any rubbish on the back of these stamps, I put them in water and I remove all, all of the bits of paper. And I'll tell you why I do that. I have a very, very fastidious collector who, who, who will spend quite a lot of money with me, providing there's no paper on the back. Because he says, he says, hey Bill, how do I know that underneath that piece of paper on the back, there's not a fin? or there's not a pinhole, and you don't. So remove any rubbish on the back, 
and find out exactly you know the, the, the quality of your stamp because if it's got a fin or if it's got a pinhole that really reduces the value Okay, we've got a page here of Penny Reds with what we call London Numbers in Maltese Cross. It was a particular type of Maltese Cross cancellation that was used in London and, and you find 12, 12 numbers within the centre of the cross. We don't really know the purpose, but, but the key one is plate four. And we've got a we've got a nice we've got a nice plate four here. And and that is the key one. Now when you're buying your key stamps such as your plate 225 or your London number 4 in cross, pay decent money for your key stamps because your auctioneer or your dealer is going to look at the key stamp first and if he likes the key stamps, he'll put good money on that and then he'll put good money on the others because he wants the key stamp. If you cut your budget on your key stamp, you make, in my opinion, that is, that is a false economy. Okay? So pay money for your key stamps. What else? Ah, oh, here we are. We've got, a, uh, we've got some interesting items here. Now, uh, Graham, I'm going to show you two penny reds here that are cancelled with a blue Maltese cross. The Maltese cross, which was the world's first cancellation, uh, when struck on the penny black, was usually struck in red. Not always, because you, you can find the black Maltese cross on it. But the penny red is virtually all examples are cancelled in black with the black Maltese cross. You, you will find blue Maltese crosses, which were used in 15 to 20 offices, Preston, Truro, Sleaford, uh, and other places. But, but, but they're, they're attractive and they're sought after. So th th this collector has two examples, it's one of which is pretty nice. It's, a, it's not a complete strike, but it's, you know, it looks nice. Clearly is blue. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to turn, oh dear, oh dear. I turn it over and we've got a, got a corner. We got quite a bad corner crease there. That's not. That's not. Yeah, yeah. And you can see what's happened is that there's blue, blue ink on the back where that that corner that corner of the stamp was originally folded right over on the front when it was cancelled. So instead of, instead of being worth say 175 pounds, that stamp is now probably worth 40 to 50 at most. Okay. Yeah. So look at your stamps. Use your eyes your tweezers and your magnifying glass. You can't stress that enough. We've got another blue Maltese cross here with a, with a different type of cross, very, uh, in a very watery ink, okay? Looks very nice. But I'm turning it over and I'm seeing a little mark. I'm seeing a little mark in the middle there, right? Now that is, that, that, if you see a little mark like that, that is alarm bells. Why is that there? I'm gonna hold it up to the light and it's got a pin off. It's been on a letter, and someone has possibly put a pin to attach the letter to the envelope, and they put it through the stamp. That dramatically affects the value, and although it's a very nice looking stamp, which would retail maybe £225, that pinhole reduces the value to £40-£50. Pity. It's a real shame. Oh, unfortunate. It's a real shame but it's something you've got to look out for. Let's see what else we've got here. Right, so we've got lots of pretty average penny reds. Not much interest there, not much interest there. The penny red in Perth is a pretty common stamp. He's, he's started a partial reconstruction, uh, but that's not really that interesting. What is, what is the typical value of in Perth penny reds, uh, the range? A, a, a free margin one, which is one cut into because these stamps were removed from the cheap by scissors. A typical free margin one, could sell for 50 pence, something like that. A superb one, a superb one cut from a rare plate with a Maltese cross could sell for 125, 150 pounds. There are very rare plates that will sell for 1,500, 2,000 pounds. That's incredible. So, you know, you, you, your price range is enormous. Yeah. Okay, what else, what else can we, ah, here's an interesting stamp, a very interesting stamp. The Penny Red exists in, quite a few different shades. The basic shade is a red-brown, but in the 1850s, there's a small printing, which is in a, what we call a lake red shade. Now, I don't know what lake red is. I don't know who, 
who gave it that that uh, that label. And it's a very confusing label, um, but but it's 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 a darker, duller red shade. And here's 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 a exam a, a nice example of the lake red, which which is a stamp that a lot of people don't really know what it is. That is a good example. And and of course. It must have a cert. It's got an RPS cert, which says Penny Lake Red in Perth, plate 152, which is the range of Alphabet 2 plates where the Lake Red is found, used as genuine. Now, that, that stamp, uh, without the cert, I don't know, £10. With the cert, probably... 475, 575 pounds. That's drastic. Oh, now we've got a very interesting stamp coming up here. All, all of these items here were, were removed from the sheets by scissors. In 1848, an Irishman, Henry Archer, came up with the amazing idea of perforating stamps. Perforation as a, as a concept was not new by them, but he came up with the, the idea of perforating the stamp. So he he produced uh, several machines and was ultimately successful in perforating the imperfect stamps. And he, he conducted a series, of, a series of experiments, which are not surprisingly called the Henry Archer Experimental Perforations. And they're rare. You need a bit of experience to spot, to find them in the in general public, okay? But if you can identify them, then th th this nice example here, well centered, lightly cancelled worth 350 to 400 pounds. Wow, Yeah, that much, huh? So, this one. So yeah, th th this stamp might look like you know a five pound stamp, but it's not, it's 350 to 400 pounds. But wow. you've got to know your stamps. This is hiding in this album right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next page, you've got some very, very interesting items here, which I think I, I probably sold to the collector years ago. They relate to the Henry Archer trials. Henry Archer wanted to win the printing contract from Perkins Bacon. So he, he was allowed to produce a series of trial, trial printings uh, using the head of, Prince, of the Prince Consul, Prince Albert. These are the only stamps which show his, his profile and that they exist in several colours. They exist perforate, imperforate, and they are scarce to some of them very rare. For instance, the blue, the, an example in blue, which we don't have here, would sell for £45,000, something like that. You know, they are very, very nice. But but you've got to look at the Prince Consort essays because it was on, printed on poor quality paper and you get a lot of thins, a lot of creases, a lot of faults, and it's priced accordingly. Um, a, 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 a really nice one in red-brown is probably £2,000. I know, yeah, one, one, one which is damaged sell for 500 but still wow an, an, okay. an example in black and that's a very nice one that's probably two thousand two and a half thousand pounds so th th this is a really weird collection because there's there's fakes and there's forgeries but there are some gems and this is definitely a gem right here oh it is yeah This is an interesting item here, again, which he, I, he must have bought from me. I recognise this this layout here, this, this is the layout of a major penny red collector now deceased called Robert Folkard, who was a leading pioneer in the six, 1960s and the 70s. And it's possible with a certain range of plates to put together what's called a quartet, which is very, very difficult to put together, where for a certain period, the printers use two different watermarks, small crown and a large crown, and they use two different perforations, perforation 14 and perforation 16. And it's possible to find all four combinations of small crown 14, small crown 16, large crown 16, large crown 14 from the same plate, but crucially with the same lettering. So they've all got the same lettering. These stamps are all lettered BG. All from the same plate, but, but showing the four combinations of printing. That's rare. Wow. That's rare. Again, this, 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 this here looks a very basic stamp, but it's, it's got double perforation. It, it, it's, uh, it's got a double perforation at the top and the sides. 
as, as a normal stamp, I don't know, 15, 15, 17 pound, 15, with a double perforation, 125 pounds. What's a double perforation? Why, how did it get that? Well, what's happened is, stage of perforation, which happened at Somerset House, they, they have a, adjusted the perforating comb incorrectly, so it's made two, two downward plunges in, into a certain part of the sheet. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's very unusual. Uh, it, this is a weird thing, very weird thing. Strip, strip of three, penny red in perfs. But this looks like a cancellation, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not. It is not a cancellation. That's actual manuscript? This handwriting? No, it's a hand stamp. It's a hand stamp that reads, Frank I. Scudamore, Chief Examiner. Now, we don't know much about Frank I. Scudamore, except he became very high within in the British Post Office, but he died in penury in Turkey in the 1890s. Something went wrong. It suggested he was actually the brains behind uh, a forgery at the Stock Exchange, which netted millions to the post office staff there. It suggested he was the, 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 the brains behind it. But at one stage, in the 1850s, he was responsible for quality control. He was given a hand stamp, which he applied to sheets earmarked for destruction. But he never destroyed them. Thankfully, he never destroyed them. And in the early 1980s, uh, a whole tranche of this material, totally new to the market, uh, came up for sale in the Sotheby's auction. Nobody knew what it was. I, I filled my boots with it. I did very well out of it, actually. Um, and uh, and it, it, it's really, it, this, this did by Gibbons. This, by the way, let, let, let's have a quick word about this book here. F firstly, Gibbons, I wish, I wish you'd use a better binding. <laughs> I, this, this is a brilliant book. Anyone who's interested in Queen Victoria, nine engraved, you've got to buy this book. It's 54.95, and it's worth every penny. But Gibbons, let's let's just have a better binding, please. <laughs> we'll have okay. to tag them in this video, but we'll yeah. put the link in the video description as well. <laughs> okay. And th this, uh, th 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 these items are listed in here with a price guide. Okay, it's a brilliant book. Now. I love it. Okay, more and more penny reds, more and more penny reds. Let's have a look at these. Okay, so in 1856, the small crown watermark has almost reached its end of use. It was replaced in 1855 by the large crown watermark, but there were still sheets of small crown watermark lying around for the printers to use. Okay, so in 1856, we get a very small final printing of small crown watermark paper from some later plates. It's called the C7 Abnormal, and it, it's a combination of what we call the alphabet three check letters, which are the, the taller letters, and the small crown watermark. It's a bit confusing, it's a bit specialized, but it's worth looking out for, because if you can find them, and someone was sat here yesterday at this show, he found a mint example, misdescribed at a dealer's stand. He paid £30 for it. Now let's have a look at what that, that stamp that he found actually catalogues at uh, £4,500. That's not worth £4,500. It's got to be worth £750. Wow. And he paid £30 to £40. What a find. Yeah, he paid £30 to £40. Yeah, he, he, he found it yesterday. And he paid 30 to 40 quid for it because he could tell the difference between the alphabets. The alphabets are the different types of lettering used in the letter squares because over the period of plate production, Perkins Bacon used different types of alphabets, which it's all in here. It's all in here. If you're interested, it's all in here. They, they, they illustrate the alphabets. There's your picture of different alphabets. Okay, so th this, this printing here is a combination of the small crown watermark and the alphabet three check letters. Not the alphabet two, which is what that other dealer had described it as yesterday, that the, this, this bargain, this chap. Not the alphabet one, not the alphabet four, but the alphabet three check letters. Th th this one has the guarantee of a Michael Williams certificate. With, who, a very good friend of mine, one of the world's leading experts, and he's very happy to issue certificates on that sort of thing. Right, I'm gonna briefly uh, go through the rest of the album. Uh, oh, there's some good. Right, there's one stamp I really want to show you. 
which is it's a penny plate number issue, where in 1858 they had the idea to prevent forgery of changing the design, where you had check letters in all four corners and you put the plate number down the side. Okay, it's a very easy issue to collect. And I'm going to show you one stamp here, right. which is lettered uh, Kilo Foxtrot. Okay, now if you look down one side, if you look down the right hand side with a magnifying glass, I, I can only see two numbers here, and it's seven followed by seven. Ooh. Whoa, the big seven seven. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. seven seven. Okay, let's look at the other side. And it's, well, a squiggle and a seven. All right, now, plate 77 is the holy grail yeah. of GB Penny Reds. Uh, there are very few examples known. Uh, there was a used example, which was attractive in appearance, but it had several perforations trimmed, that recently sold in the Stanley Gibbons auction. It's had a superb pedigree. Uh, recently sold for approximately £140,000. £140,000? Yeah, well it has a catalogue I think of 500000 <laughs> So it was, you know, it, it, it could have sold for more. I don't, I think whoever the lucky buyer was, I, I don't think he, he didn't overpay for it, that's for sure. So, <laughs> let, let, let us, so what, what do we do with this stamp? It looks to be 77 on one half, but on the other, it isn't. It, it's, it, you know, I, I, you have to assume that it's been played around with at some stage. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's not. It's not a plate. It cannot be a genuine plate seventy-seven. Uh, and and as soon as as soon as you see one of the numbers a little bit blurred, that 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 is a red flag. That wow. is a red flag. Did red. the owner of this album know that? Yes, he did. Yeah, okay. he did. Yeah, he, he he bought it as a curio years and years ago, and it's still a curio. But uh, yeah, so that's the plate 77, that is not. Wow. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to finish this. Oh, let's have a look at Penny Hackney. The, 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 the Penny Hackney Perkins Bacon issue is often overlooked. Okay? It was originally scheduled for issue in 1860. It was then delayed 10 years. In the meantime, from the 1860 design to the 1870 issue of the stamp, they change the colour. So the 1860 printings are in a rare, unissued, rosy mauve colour. Very attractive stamp. This this one here uh, is overprinted specimen. And here, here we have a, a selection of the issued stamps. You can quite clearly see the colour difference. This is worth £750, maybe £850. These are just a couple of pounds each. Yeah, what a mix. so okay. you know, it, it, it would be very easy to look to look through this album and miss all sorts of things. Yeah. So I bought this collection. I was pleased to buy it because there's lots of interest there. There's there's lots of interesting pieces. What I will now do is, when I get time, you don't think I can buy some time, do you, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. afraid I'm looking for it too. Yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I, I, I love stamps. <laughs> you know, I I, I live stamps. You know, as a dealer, collector, and as an exhibitor, but it isn't half time consuming. Yeah. You know, to do things properly is very, very time uh, consuming. So, w w what I would, what I would do, I will, um, I'll probably take a few more items out, send them up to the RPS uh, for, for certificates, and then I will make a selection and I will gradually put it into my database. Then it will appear on the website, and then some of them or all of them will appear on addition of our printed lists. So we, we have a collection that has come to the end of one life. It's ultimately recycled into, into, other, collect into other collections. But it's, it's a very interesting lot. Very interesting lot with, with, with a, lot of, uh, yeah, a, a lot of unusual material. Come and see me next year, Stampex 2024, Business Design Centre, Islington, London. You'll be very welcome and you'll be amongst friends. Terrific. Make plans to attend now. Appreciate it, Phil. This has been extremely educational. I look forward to seeing the reaction from the viewers. And of course, I'm always uh, eager to see you at Stampex and of course chat 
but learn so much more from you. You're incredibly knowledgeable about this. So again, Bill, thank you so much for doing this video with me. It's a pleasure, Graham. Terrific. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye. This video was made in partnership with the Philatelic Traders Society, the PTS, a society protecting the philatelic trade since 1929, in which its reputation for honesty, integrity, and professionalism spans the globe. Collectors purchasing from dealers must look for the PTS shield to make sure their purchases come from a reputable PTS dealer. To learn more and look through the dealer directory or even apply to have your stamp store join the PTS, go to thepts.net. More videos to come, so stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.